Hey everyone, um, I'm setting up my block detection and I figured while I'm doing that, I might as well use uh, one of the examples here, which is my next uh, spot to demonstrate how it's done through JMRI. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a simple situation, but I just figured, you know, some people might get some use out of it. Um, so what I'm working on right now is my staging right here. As you can see, this is basically four tracks that kind of like loop around on themselves. So they go this way, uh, they come in through the inbound, the four here, and they go around and they come back in. So, you know, if you can imagine a loop here, that would be my peninsula, and it's all running under the peninsula. So, um, as you can see, I already set this, the inbound side up. Um, and you can see this red on track one, track two, and then three and four are empty. And that's because that's exactly what's going on here. So my first two tracks are filled with all my locomotives and everything. And then track three, which is right here, is empty. And so is track four. Now, obviously, you know, they run all the way through. But you can see over there, track three and four are empty. So there's no, there's no trains in them. Um, but what I decided to do was split my, my yard in half because there, there's so, such long runs of track that I can actually uh, stack two trains per track. So what I did is I cut it, I cut the gap right at the middle of the track length so that I can, you know, put a train in here and then uh, notice whether there's a train in front of it or behind it. So right now is the uh, the track the, the train that's on track two, which is uh, the Union Pacific locomotive there uh, with a few cars, is going to basically get to the point where it activates track number two on that side, which I'm calling track two B, and this is track two A. So that's what right now it's lit up uh, because that train is on it. And there's other locomotives behind it, but um, let me just show you what the train that I'm going to be moving in. So the train with the caboose here is on track 2A right now, which is, it just came in from the layout. And it runs all the way to the front, I'll take it around. So here's a locomotive here, and as you can see it's track 2. And <clears throat> my gaps are right here, right between these two locomotives here. So you can actually see it. And in this particular situation, I only had to cut one gap because that rail is the one that's dictating the block. This is just a common rail. So you don't have to cut it if it's, uh, if it's set up that way. Sometimes you're forced to do double cuts because of frogs and whatever, but um, in this situation, you can see I already cut the, the first track over there, then this one, then these two are gonna get the same thing. Uh, and what I do is I, I pour this really um, hard glue between the ties, especially when I don't have ballast, just to make sure that you know everything's locked in place before I cut the gaps so I don't throw them out of alignment. Uh, it always acts as that extra, um, extra support there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the locomotive forward, and once I cross, once I cross that gap right there, I should engage the B section, which would be the second half of the staging. So that, that runs all the way through over to where I was before. Um, so here's here's how you uh, identify that. What you got to do on JMRI is you need to go to the main panel, which is the one that you see when you open up a JMRI, that one. And then under tools, I got my mouse there, under tools, you go to tables and then sensors. So what this opens up is every, every sensor that is set up right now uh, in my case, it's LocoNet, so I'm going to go to LocoNet just to make it easier to find. And these are all the inactive sensors right now. 
with a few exceptions. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure why those are active. I think it's just, uh, I don't, I don't know why that they are, but these are the ones I've used so far. So, so JMRI automatically throws them down to the bottom to just to get them in order. And, and from what I can see here, it puts them in alphabetical order. Here's your A's, your B, and then the C's. So, um, right now what we're looking to do is just identify which um, block is going to get tripped when I, when I move that locomotive forward. Um, so we're looking for one of these to change to active when I do that. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be 135, I think, because I'm, I'm setting them up uh, you know, in order. So the last, the track 1B um, in the staging, which is right here, was number 137. Uh, so it's probably going to be 136, if not 135. I think it's 136 next uh, in, in the order that I have it set up. So I'm assuming it's going to be that one. So let's see what happens when I move the locomotive forward. And I trip that. There it is. Okay, so it is 136. You can see that it turned to active. And if I back it up and clear the block, you should see the inactive pop up right there. Okay. So what that's telling me is that the BDLs, the BDL 168, which is, I have three of them here, but it's this particular one that's actually doing the work right now. And it, I call that the C BDL because A is over there, B is here, and C is here. And that's, it's actually this wire right here, the top wire right there that's uh, controlling, that's all, you know, wired to the track and that uh, section. So what that's telling me is that the BDL is firing correctly and it's identifying that train and sending the information over to JMRI under that location or that address. So now that I know that, this is simply so you can label that block. So I called the last one. <clears throat> I'm just trying to keep things consistent here. I called it C9, which was the ninth wire there. Uh, and I worked my way backwards here. I went from, you know, 15 down to 9. Um, number 16 is actually um, set up for something else. But um, so C9. So we're going to call this C8. And it's going to say track 1, track 2B outbound. Um, so let's label that now. So what you do is you click in here, and then I like to do everything in caps just so I keep things consistent. So C9 is the address of the BDL, like this, so I know what wire I'm looking at. Uh, and then we're doing staging, and it's going to be track two, but it's the B side. Let me just make sure I have everything consistent. Right, so this one's staging track B. Oh, I'm just gonna write outbound just to keep it consistent also. Okay, so I mean, you can, you can name this whatever you want. You can name it a number, you can name it a letter, you can name it, you know, a hamburger, whatever you wanna do, it doesn't matter. It's just so you can find it later when you're looking to link that uh, sensor to your block detection. So once you hit enter, it kind of locks that into place. You could always edit it later through here, but uh, right now we're just gonna leave it like that. So now you wanna go back to your panel. So here's the panel I'm using. And we are in, uh, in just the user mode right now. So we need to get into edit mode in order to be able to, to change things around. So uh, you can either do that through the I think it's the file, 
No. Oh, through options, edit mode, or you see how it says control E? I use that shortcut a lot. So we're gonna go into edit mode. Once you go into edit mode, you're gonna see all these control points pop up, circles and squares and things like that. And you also see the graph or the grid behind the track so you can align things. And uh, it just uh, helps visually with everything. So right now what we're looking to do is uh, track 2B, which is this one here, is assign that sensor to this track. So what you're gonna do is, once you get your mouse over the control circle, you're gonna, you're going to right click and then go to edit. And when you go to edit, this window pops up and it's gonna ask you what you wanna name that block. Now, if, I, if you just, these are the blocks that I've named so far. Um, and again, try to keep all this stuff consistent. So I did staging track 1B. Uh, that was the last one I did. So now I'm going to do staging track one, uh, 2B. So same thing. Staging track 2B. Now, I'm, I'm not really sure why you have to name this stuff twice, but you have to do it. Otherwise, it won't let you do anything else. Uh, so now you go to create edit. This is where you're actually going to assign uh, that block. So you go to create edit. This window pops up, and there's a lot you could do here, but we're not going to get to that. Uh, what I want to show you right now is just how to actually assign the sensor. So when you go to sensor, you have a pull down here to set that sensor. So once you hit that, you're going to see every sensor that I've already named from that original panel that I showed you. The sensor panel, I, that's why you name it there, so you can find it here when you get to this. So now we're going to look for our track 1B outbound, remember that's what we named it, right here, C9, oh, I'm sorry, uh, track 2B outbound, and look at that, I made a mistake, do you see how I named them both C9, it's actually C8, let's double check that, so we're looking at 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight. It should be eight. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fix that. So instead of assigning that right now, we're gonna cancel. We're gonna go, we're gonna cancel this also. And we're gonna go back to our sensor list here. And we have to call this C8 now. So what we're gonna do is edit. And it's as simple as just going in here and changing the 9 to an 8. Hit apply. And now that's set up for that name. So now when we go back to the pull down panel on the actual screen that we're working with here, we should see that name instead. So. Let's go to our, here's our block that we're working on. Right click, edit. The name stuck, so that's good. This, this is the name for, for this window. Uh, but now when you go to create, edit, and you go to sensor, now we should be able to find the one we just altered. So let's see, it was C8, and there it is, C8. See how there's only one C8 and it's not, before we had two C9s. And it's correct, track 2B outbound, the way we just modified it. So what you do is you select that one and you hit apply. Now when you hit apply, if the train is on that block right there, it should turn red. But since it's not right now, since it's off the track, it's not going to. So when you hit apply, it knows that you're looking to assign that section to C8. You hit OK, you hit Done. And now when I pull the locomotive up, that block right there, and by the way, if you notice, it's, it's thicker because I've named it and I've actually assigned it. This one's thin because it doesn't have any, any assignment to it. Uh, so when I go forward, we should see that turn red as soon as we trip it. There it is. 
and when I back up, it should release it when it leaves the block, right there. So visually, what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that there's a, there's nothing on the other side of the of the um, uh, staging yard, so I have room there. Now, theoretically, what I would do is move the train when it comes into you know staging move the train all the way to the front and then i have room in the back to stack another train so in, in theory that would pr that would probably be red and this would probably be empty unless i have two trains or if i want to put a really long train then you would see that both blocks are occupied now that helps me because everything's going to be hidden but on top of that i also i'll have cameras as well so at least i'll know uh, what it looks like under there anyway um so now what i need to do is uh since i made two sections here which you don't have to do but you know i just did it that way you could just stretch that first section all the way out but whatever so um what i'm gonna do is uh go to this circle now right click and do the same thing i'm gonna go to edit but now it's easier because everything's already there you already did all the work from the previous one so when you go to the drop down, you're going to find that uh, 2B track. Here it is, staging track 2B. So you're basically just imitating, you're doing, you're doing everything you just did before. You go to create, edit block, uh, sensors, and then it's already there. It, it remembers the last thing you did, just to, I think just to make it faster. So you see it's already there. Um, if you don't want it to be that, then you can change it, but that's what I want it to be. So when I hit apply, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move the locomotive forward so you can see what I mean. I move it forward. You're going to see the other block engage. There it is. And it actually picked it up anyway because they, it knows that I'm trying to, to assign this. So I'm going to hit apply and okay. Done. And now you see that the entire, this entire second track is uh, lit up because I had the locomotive there. If I back it up, now the whole entire line goes black. But it still knows that there's another train, you know, in, in the first half of the track on, on 2A. So there's room on the other side to uh to continue um so then what you do is uh to get out of edit mode remember you, you could do it through there or you could do it through control e and that that's what it looks like when you're out of edit mode so this is more you know friendly to the eye um and once again if i move the train forward once i trip that block it should turn red there it is and then when I go back and get off the block, it turns black again. So that's working perfectly. That's basically what I did with all the blocks. Now I still have to do track three and track four, which I haven't wired up yet under the bench work. Um, so that would be next. Uh, and then always remember to save your work. So what I do is I, I just hit control S for save. And then it's always going to ask you to overwrite when you when you go to store it, you know, under that name. In this, in this case, I named it um, HO Layout Dispatcher. So you hit store, and it's going to ask you if you want to overwrite it, and you you hit yes or okay. So that's it. The next time I open this panel, it's going to be exactly set up that way. Um, then the next once I set up all the block detection here, the other thing I have to do is set up my tortoise machines. Uh, so that I can control them from this panel. And I'll probably make another video on how I do that uh, once I get ready to do that. All right, so I just uh, I figured this might help a little bit with anybody get, that's kind of new to block detection. And uh, that's all. All right, take care.